Hey everyone, it is George Kuros and a little solo episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And I'm recording this is December 26th, the day after Christmas Day. We had a wonderful celebration. I had some family come down here, which is really nice. And uh, kids are really loving Christmas in Florida. It was the coldest day it's been since we moved here, but it was a really special day. And I'm really appreciative of all I have. And I've been trying to take some time away from work, away from social media, and really trying to just focus on consumption and just trying to figure out what I want to do, some things I want to try. And for example, one thing that I am trying, and if you've been listening to this podcast for any amount of time, I've really been focusing on taking care of my health, just trying to get into really good shape, fixing my eating habits, things like that too. And it's interesting because I was looking back at some pictures that I have throughout the years where you can see my first day in January of 2020, January 2021, January 1st, 2022. And what's really interesting about those pictures is they look really different. And I can honestly tell you January 1st, 2020, I was eating really poorly. January 1st, 2021, what you notice is that if you see that picture, there's significant change. But probably about August, September of 2020, I started really fixing my eating habits and thinking differently about how I would eat. And why I share that with you is because I didn't actually just go on some fad diet, something that, you know, would lose weight really quick. I asked myself, what can I do now that I could do three years from now and not change a thing? And what you see in January 1st of 2021, I'm basically eating the same I was now in January 1st, 2022, December 26th, 2022. And I will continue to focus on that. It doesn't mean I don't ever eat unhealthy. I have cheat nights where I can indulge in pizza, things like that. But those nights typically were norms and eating healthy was the exception. And it's the other way around. And so it shows you the importance of habits and trying to figure out what works best for you, not trying to go all in on something all at one time. And then what happens is that it becomes so overwhelming that you tend to quit. And I have a good friend of mine who is trying to focus on losing weight, getting his health in check. And I cautioned him. I said, look, you're trying not to eat for a day. It's not something that's sustainable. And you're probably going to just swing the pendulum back the other way. And so you have to really focus on what can I do years from now. And that's something that I've just been really thinking about in some of the habits I'm trying to change. And one of the things I've been doing for the last while is I have uh, focused on half marathon training. I've run marathons years ago. And I always say this, that the hardest part of a marathon is actually not the marathon, is the training. The train is really tough. And if you do it in a proper way, by the time you get to the marathon, that should be not easy, but a lot easier than if you didn't do it. And so I decided that I was floating in some of the things that I was doing with my exercise. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a 14 week half marathon training and just jump into week seven, because I feel like my fitness is at a level where I probably could at the point where I'm okay with week seven. And what's been beautiful about this process is I don't really think about what I have to do. I don't say, ah, maybe I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do this. I know basically seven weeks ahead what I'm going to do Friday, five, six weeks from now. And it's been really helpful to me because it takes away that choice of what I get to do. And so I don't really debate it at all. I just, I don't really worry about how do I feel that day? What's the weather like? Any of that stuff. I just, I've committed to this. I'm going to do it. And what's interesting, I don't actually have any race that I'm planning to run. I just wanted to do the training. And if a race happens to be close to that time, great. But it's not my focus. I, I do have a goal of a time that I want to run in. and. To, to complete a half marathon. And so if I do that just solo, if I actually enter a race, kind of figure that out. And it is 
tweaking some of these things that I've been doing because while I do half marathon training, going back to my advice earlier, while I do half marathon training seven, seven months from now, I don't know, maybe not, but what I think I'm trying to learn through this process is having those specific goals of what I'm going to do. So I don't float. And so I make really good use of my time when I exercise, when I make better use of my time, the time seems to go quicker and I'm more efficient with it. And I think that's what I'm trying to figure out through this process. So that's a little bit, I'm doing some of that stuff, but I'm also taking a little time to write each day. And when I feel inspired to create something and I, I feel that is what I'm doing right now, it's dinner time, it's late on, on Monday night. And I just felt, you know what? have something to say. So I want to share it. And I think that's a really important aspect of our world is, are we saying stuff when we feel we have something to share? Or are we saying something because a microphone is on all of us all the time, and we feel we need to get in our words. And I've shared this story before. And it's something that I think is really meaningful. And I talk a lot about my refing experience. And I remember one time I was refereeing a game and there was two coaches and it was interesting because one coach was had this notorious reputation for nonstop yelling at refs just all the time. All he would do was just complain at the refs. And then the other coach, I didn't know him. I had never heard of him. And I remember we were talking before the game and my partner in that, that, that game, he said to me, he said, if that coach says something to you, cause he rarely talks you better listen because he doesn't say anything. If he has something to say, something's going on. And I always think about that because it's a lot like our world that when people just talk for the sake of saying stuff, you tend to block them out. You tend to just ignore them and feel that they just, whatever, I don't care what they have to say. But when people are thoughtful of, when they choose to speak and really speaking up when they truly have something to say, then it becomes much more powerful. And it's one of the reasons over the last few years, I've tried to, I don't know, I don't want to say lessen the content I've created, but be more thoughtful of sharing and posting. I don't, I, I do post like I'm recording this, but it's going to be, there's, I wanted people to have a consistent schedule of when I share my things, but I've also tried to really through my podcast, not just do solo podcasts. I wanted to give people you maybe never have heard of or people that you do know and give them an opportunity to learn from them and to share. But t today I felt compelled to share some stuff just because I like talking it out and making this learning process vi visible. And I think part of it, I'm reading get Gretchen Rubin's book, The Happiness Project. And I'm about, I think I'm, she splits it up into months. It's a really great book so far. And I just finished February. And I've been really trying to read quite a bit. Just look at different perspectives, different types of books, different, not just what's the content of it, but how they're written. I'm just really interested in that right now. And one of the things she shares as she's going through this project is she says that they say that people teach what they need to learn. And yeah, that's probably why I talk a lot about my health and fitness. And I never tried to share like, you should be doing this. I don't know. You can say whatever that I should need to do, but you don't know me. You don't know my situation. You don't know how I deal with certain foods, deal with certain exercise, things like that. I try to learn in a way that hopefully could teach someone. I'm not trying to teach anyone anything. I'm just trying to share my learning. And hopefully if you share that in an open manner, somebody can listen to this and take something from it. So that's what I'm hoping to do. And I always have this struggle. And I've had this when I was teaching, when I was a vice principal, when I was a principal in work central office, when now that I speak full time for a living, where you have these moments, I think this is what I'm struggling with right now. You have these times where you're just constant, you're just and you're overwhelmed, you're exhausted, but you're also making a difference that you're having a huge impact, even though oftentimes it's at the emotional toll. And this is true with speaking, it was true with administration, 
very true with teaching. And then you go to this break and then you're like, oh, I need a break so bad. And then you sometimes I would feel, and I know some of my friends who are in the profession feel this way too. There's almost like, it's almost feels like you're like, like an induced bipolar situation where you have this tremendous, maybe you're just constant that you don't even realize when you're struggling or you're, you feel like you're making an impact and then you feel like you're not doing enough. And then you feel some guilt. And it's weird because if you truly want to make an impact on others, you have to take care of yourself. But I feel in the profession, there's this guilt that we induce in ourselves when we take that time off, when we take that time because we are so overwhelmed. And I feel I'm struggling with that quite a bit that just I'm like, am I making a difference right now? Is it selfish of me not to be sharing stuff, not to be posting things, not to be trying to help people? But part of me is just, yeah, I want to back off sharing this stuff because I think people need a break. I, people need a break for me. And people need to do different things. And so I always struggle with that. So I feel like there's this kind of letdown. I think one of the reasons I struggle with this is very personal. Again, if you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, I've, I've talked openly about my parents and the impact they've had on me. And I've talked a lot about my father passing away and his impact and how much I miss him. And it's actually coming up on the 10 year anniversary this year. And it's just weird how quickly that time goes by that when we lose someone that you never knew life without them. And then all of a sudden there's a huge gap where they weren't there and it's hard. And there's things I see in my dad. I think even sharing these stories, I think this is one of the ways I honor him and the, one of the ways he still lives on in me. But I look back a lot of his life and kind of seeing different things. And I know this is a really harsh thing to say, and I struggle with it, that I feel like my dad died twice. And I know that's a weird thing to say, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. He actually passed away when he passed away. And so blessed that my last words to my father were, I love you. But I feel a little bit of him died when he retired from owning a restaurant. And he, you could see he struggled with not going there every day, not like having that purpose to get up and, and how much he centered. A lot of people would say it was about work. And I, I wouldn't say that. And I can understand why people would see that. His, he, I feel he, he saw this purpose in, in actually just bringing joy to people, to seeing people just enjoy food. And I saw when, after you retired, we'd have guests over for dinner and things like that. And the sheer joy he had just making meals for people and seeing them smile when they are having it and joking around with them and not just being about food, but being about hospitality and connecting. And so even though he really struggled with that, it took him years and years to really find purpose in his family in some ways. And it wasn't that he wasn't a great dad. It, he was awesome, but he struggled because he always kind of struggled with what he had felt was his gift and the impact he was having and what he, and how much that took away from his family and finding joy and connecting with them. And he worked so hard that he had not been able to maybe spend as much time as he would have liked. And it was nice to see that as he got older, he never said, I love you to me until I think maybe it's like sixties or seventies. Like it, he started chipping away and it was like interesting, but it took him a long time to get out of that. And I think the reason I share this with you is because sometimes I feel like that we've moved to Orlando and I feel sometimes I have this weird guilt that I'm, <laughs> I'm doing more things for myself. I'm doing more things for my family. I am having a blast going to basketball games. 
it is something I've dreamed of since I was a kid to have season tickets to NBA game. And I've worked really hard to have that opportunity and to create that. But there's also this weird feeling that I should be working and I should be doing something in that when I'm there, I'm not doing something to make this impact. And so I guess that's part of the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up. So I'm trying to wrestle with this. I'm trying to share with this because you want to make an impact. And do I have some like life lesson on this? I don't know. I don't know if I do right now. I just wanted to say that this is something I'm struggling with. And I think it's important to that do we create a time where we are so focused on our work and it can be your passion, it can be your purpose, but then when it's done, you feel like you're purposeless. You have no purpose. And I think that's part of it is I wanted to say, like, hey, like I love my job. I, I think that I can have a huge impact on the world through, through my work, through the things I do, but I don't wanna just be about my career. I don't wanna be just about my job. And I want to be able to have time with my family and enjoy them and watching them grow up and seeing that too. And so I think that's part of the move. And so I feel like I'm in this transition before the transition is forced upon me or it just happens all of a sudden. So I wanted to share that. And you realize that purpose that you have as an educator um, on so many, and this is something I always, this is one of the reasons I talk about because of a teacher is there's such an impact that educators not only have on their students, but also on their colleagues and like little interactions they have, little things that you say. And over the holidays, it was nice because I was kind of feeling the doldrums. I got a nice message from a teacher who had been on my staff when I was principal, probably about 12, 13 years ago. And she had shared with me how excited she was. I hadn't heard for maybe in three or four years that she just got an interview for an assistant principal job. And she reached out to me and she told me and she thanked me for all that I did to help her when I was her principal. And to think that she probably had worked with five, six, seven, maybe 10, who knows, since COVID, maybe 80, who knows, principals since me. But to know that you did something to help somebody at some point in their career makes an impact. And then she reached out and she got the job and I was so excited for her and she's going to be an amazing at that job. And it was just really. And here's the thing that I know about her and she knows this about me. Um, I have high expectations and I know this, that not everyone loved working with me and that's okay. I didn't love working with everybody. And I think part of it too, was I had extremely high expectations and I did everything to support people do everything I could, but I wanted to create spaces where we could truly give the best we could to our kids. And I think you know, when I look back, sometimes I always struggle with this. And I've said this before, that sometimes I, I didn't want to, at the detriment of adults, do what's best for kids. Often to do what's best for kids, you have to do what's best for adults. And you have to figure that out because if you exhaust the adults, you're never gonna do what's best for kids. So I had these high expectations. And I think that with all criticism I could receive when I was an administrator. I, I know one criticism that would be really hard to levy against me was I didn't have, I didn't ask anybody to do things that I wasn't willing to do myself. That as hard as I was on others and the expectations I had, I, I always had them for myself. And I remember listening to a teacher tell a story about an administrator about how they were basically saying, hey, we should try this, we should try this. The administrator is saying this. And they're like, yeah, let's go. And she said, okay, you go do it. <laughs> and it was like, aren't you gonna do it? I think it's a really good idea, but you should do it. And that was just not me. I tried everything to, you know, I, Chris Kennedy would say this, be knee deep in learning. And I had great leaders. I often talk about Kelly Wilkins. She really, she really taught me that on how important it was to lead through your example. That's the best way people learn, right? To, that they see that you're willing to do this stuff. And I remember one time and talking about, thinking about Kelly. I remember one time I was really frustrated and she's someone who I look to as a mentor. And I said to her, 
I'm struggling because I, um, I, I just don't understand why people are not pushing and trying this and trying these new things and doing this. And I remember her just saying to me, she goes, George, not everyone's you. And I was like, what? What do you, what do you mean? She's like, not everyone's you. Like, you're expecting everyone to do the same things that you're doing, but they're not you. And I've thought about that so much. That conversation is, like, you get these, like these little moments in your life where it's like, wow, that changed kind of everything. And that one was for me, right? And it's just like really try to be empathetic. And really, a lot of times when I look back at some of my career, I was often trying to get people to be like me, but not understanding their own situation, what they were going through. And right now, like I remember a time where I would have worked nonstop through the holiday break. I would have been nonstop. And that actually just brought me something at that time that I really needed. But now I wouldn't criticize someone for doing that nor would I criticize someone for needing the break because everyone needs different things at different times and at different times of their lives. There is a time that would have been wonderful for me. Right now, it's not good. And I think part of me, and it doesn't mean I don't have high expectations for myself. It doesn't mean that I don't try to do my best at everything that I do. It's just we have different times or different lives. We're going through different things. Sometimes we need to be at work until 11 p.m. at night because we're dealing with stuff that we don't want to deal with. And so we go do those things. And I remember that conversation really helped me. Really thinking about that, not everyone's you. And so I was writing some of these notes down about what I would talk about. And just as I, I think about what am I, what does this all mean? And so I think for me, it is ultimately this, is that you need to have those high expectations for yourself. But what we need to really do is stop and appreciate how far you and I have come. And you have done different things on your journey than I have and vice versa. And I think a lot of times we complain about where we're not at, what we're not doing, but the best way to live is to really give your best to the moment, appreciate what you've done in the past, and that sets up a beautiful future. And so I know that when I have these tough times, what has helped me is to stick with habits, stick with things that will, I can continue every single day because even when I have downs, I know there's a pattern. I have ups eventually. And guess what? Here's another little tr trick. I will have downs again and I'll have ups again. And that's kind of part of the process, but you just stick with what you know, with what you do where you find joy, the things that help you grow, help you become better. And one of those things for me is just taking those time to reflect, share my learning, and hopefully somewhere in all this talking, I've helped someone figure out something for themselves. Um, but if not, even then, I really appreciate you being here and listening. I hope wherever you are, you're getting exactly the time that you need. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks for all you do. Take care.